when the new device came out. A lot of little changes is what started to make the difference. Hey, Tim, thank you so much for spending time with me today. No problem, Tracy. So can you tell us a little bit about your health history prior to coming to QHS? Yeah, there's a lot. Heart transplant, cancer, right arm amputation, kind of a medically induced uh, dementia because I was over-medicated, and um, a stroke two years ago. Oh, my gosh. And uh, right now, I'm um, stage five kidney failure, and I'm going through the kidney transplant process and going through dialysis consulting. Um, They're going to, uh, I, I guess I can go on dialysis now anytime. I, my numbers are uh, already where I should be on dialysis. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it looks like I'm going to go on dialysis for a while <clears throat> and then either get a live donor transplant uh, or um, maybe in a couple of years, it would be just a regular transplant, uh, not a live, a live donor, meaning I would bring somebody to the table. I have too many risk factors that would uh, that would allow me to get a a kidney right off the top of the bat. So we have to be a, a live donor, or get on the list and wait till there's uh, a donor that would that would match with me. Um, and, you know, whatever the markers are that they allow me to get a kidney. So okay. the kidney failed because of the heart transplant meds I was on. Um, I am one of the, the people that the medication, the immunosuppressant medication, it actually harms other organs in your body. And yeah, so so the kidney was a side effect of the medication from the heart. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And not much you could do, you know. So it's I've been ten years. Uh, heart transplant. So. So how familiar are you with the Q arc bed? I'm very familiar with the Q arc and Dr. A and everything that's been talked about. Apparently we're going to be able to go to Salt Lake City in a few weeks. Right. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, you're going to come with us? Yeah. And John? Yes. Okay. How does that make you feel? I don't think I have words to describe how I feel, honestly. Uh, because... It's it's kind of one of those things where (sighs) 
the anticipation and, and take you to another level of of um, of reality, right? Uh, and and so you know how you ever get so excited about something and it sounds too good to be true or just you really wish for something um but until it happens you kind of hold back is that where you feel like you're at right now well have I have I have a I have a different sense of understanding um uh as far as my belief um <laughs> I'm I knew this day was coming before it ever happened I didn't know how I didn't know when, and I certainly didn't think it was going to happen the way that it happened. I never talked about this publicly because it's such a personal thing. But when I was... under anesthesia from a heart transplant. I think it was about seven hours surgery. And in that time, um, of course, I was unconscious, but I uh, was... My mind was in a place where I felt like I was swimming in this pool of love. Sounds beautiful. And that it was uh, an all knowing experience. I didn't see anything or hear anything, so to speak, but everything was and I spoken to my soul. So I had the consciousness to ask a bunch of questions and I was giving answers to these questions. And what they were were really doesn't matter. But what I what I found out was that everything is connected, everybody's connected at levels that I really didn't understand before, but it was all around love. And then this impression came into my soul that everything was going to be okay. And at the time, I wasn't sure You know, I thought that meant uh, uh, that our trend is going to be okay. But as time went on and I've had a chance to reflect back on it, it was like everything was going to be whole again. And that's what came to me. Beautiful. And so... 
like I said, I I kind of put it off to the side. Um, after the transplant, I recovered and it was awesome. And then I got cancer. And I, I it was in my wrist and I, I lost my hand because of the cancer in my wrist. Um, and then the, I was going to be made whole really had a new meaning versus the heart transplant. And so, um, I thought, okay, well, how and where that's going to happen, I have no idea. And then I got a call. And I was told about this QHS group and what was going on. And actually, it was my brother that called me. I said, I signed you up. He says, uh, this is what's going on. And he started telling me, you know, you don't have to believe me. I know it sounds crazy. And I just told him, say, John, you don't have, you don't have to say anything more. I knew the state was coming. Sign me up. What do I have to do? And uh, so we got started last February, March, I think it was. And uh, so uh, everything's been very impressive. And some things have been... Uh, so over under promise and over delivered for me personally, it was it's been unbelievable. Like what? How has it helped you? Well, a year ago, you and I couldn't have had this conversation. I couldn't. I had I had leftover issues uh, from my stroke. That kept me from having emotional conversations. It's part of your, you know, strokes are very complicated. But um, part of my brain can process speech when it really got emotional, right? Mm -hmm. So I would have to stop kind of what I'm doing now a little bit. And I really have to concentrate on not being emotional so that I can talk logically about what's going on. I, I could never, I couldn't talk about simple things, right? I couldn't talk about my relationships with my kids or anything that was stressful. I just could never, I couldn't get it out without crying because I didn't have the capacity to do it. Just that, that was gone. Um, and uh, I guess it's probably after six months of being on the different devices that. I could have conversations about emotional things to my family and to my friends without having to stop and really get my composure. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it. So it helped with an area of your brain. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, it, also, it also helped. Um, 
like I was in an enormous amount of pain. Um, uh, I had uh, pain from my from the amputation in my arm. It was pretty much constant. Uh, that's gone away. I had uh, problems with walking and balance really bad. Um, after my stroke recovery, uh, I think I was hospitalized for about two months. And then I had uh, four or five months of in-home therapy. And after about six months, I was doing really, really well. And I was uh, walking really fast, almost to the point of running. And, and then uh, my muscles started to lose communication in my leg to with my brain. And I guess it happens in a small percentage of people after strokes that even after therapy, it would you can regress and that's what happened. So um, I, uh, yeah, oh, oh, my, my legs weren't right. I couldn't walk the same. And uh, after being a couple hours on my feet, I would have to get sit back down in my wheelchair. And so uh, when I when I, when I got I guess it was in September when the new device came out, mm -hmm. that one really did it. Um, I had the I had the other device like a first version and. Uh, Um, a lot that helped with a lot of the pain and a lot of the swelling, but I really wasn't seeing, noticing a lot of significant changes. But there, a lot of little changes is what st started to make the difference. And before I got the new device, I was looking for it. Uh, before I got the new device. They called me Timmy Timber because I was falling so much. Ah. So, after about three days of having the new device, man, my, I'm my balance is perfect. You know, I'll still move around. It looks like I'm dancing. Uh because I'm actually falling, but trying to, yeah, but recovering. Um, That's amazing. Three days. Yeah, th three days, and my I had quit falling. Um, and I mean, I was falling just for dumb reasons. I was falling backwards, falling sideways. I just really was really it was not good. Um. So, um. Like I said, I still have issues, but I don't fall anymore. And I walk really well, pretty well. Um, and I don't really use my wheelchair as much as I did unless I'm really, really exhausted. Mm -hmm. So maybe a couple times a week, I just can't do it anymore. Um, and... Uh, I had a, I had a, I could exercise a lot more at that time. It was, I really had a, I wouldn't say more energy, like I didn't have this burst of energy, but I had energy and I didn't have difficult on the recovery. You know, how sometimes, you, you know, you go too hard your legs or you just get worn out. And I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting worn out. So, um, 
Yeah, it's been it's been very impressive so far on what it's done for me. That's wonderful. And now, I mean, the reason I brought up the QR earlier in the conversation is because you were talking about in two years getting a kidney transplant. But if you look at the Q arc and the possibilities there, right? I mean, if well, you were to look look at that, what you know, what do you want? So essentially, what I'm asking with this is, is now we get a chance to right. have a do over. We all do. Oh right? yeah, right. We're gonna have thirty year old bodies essentially, the cells of a thirty year old, everything rebuilt. Healthy, happy, and whole is the term that comes to mind. Yeah. What are you going to do now? How are you going to live your best life? What excites you? I know it sounds crazy. Um, But two things that really excite me. to be able to put my hands together when I pray. I don't think you realize how powerful that is until you can't get your two hands together to do that. There's there's really power in uniting your hands and your fingers in prayer. I never understood that until I prayed without the ability to do that. And it seems really small, but it's it's really significant. And then the other thing is I'll give my wife beautiful. These little things that are so important that so many of us take for granted. Yeah. No, those are the two biggest things I look forward to. That's everything else will take care of itself. And, Mm -hmm. you know, while I'm planning, um, I'm taking the, the necessary steps to plan for a transplant in case anything goes wrong, you know, if delays or whatever. I because I, I I don't know the timing. I I hope it's in May. I mean, I hope it's it happens when it does. But if it doesn't, I still have to worry about you know taking care of myself until that time comes. And so that's why when we were talking earlier. You know, I was describing where I was in the process. Right, I get that. Um, You know, when you're at end-stage renal, end-stage kidney failure, that's where I'm at. Um, You really have to be practical about your decisions and your thoughts. And so, you know, the key arc... And all the things that we've talked about, I mean, I'm, I, I, I mean, I'm, it's, it's hard to let go of one to embrace the other. Does that make sense to you? Do you know what I mean? I, I mean, uh, I can't imagine how things will be when I've gone through the arc. I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't even put it into words, right? It's like knowing it'd be life starts all over again. 
right? Yes, for sure. Life so starts all over again. If you got to look into the future a year from now and you could create whatever you chose, whatever your your whole heart's desire would be. So say it's April or say it's Easter of 2024 and everything is already perfect for you. What are you doing? I think I'm trying to bless other people with the same opportunity that I had. Beautiful. Because what I've learned um, is as rough as I've had it, I've been very lucky that I don't have I didn't have worse outcomes when I was, when I had my heart transplant, it was a very difficult process to get there. That was, uh, that was a bad experience, but I made it to the heart transplant. I made it through recovery. The cancer didn't kill me. There's no cancer in my body now. Um, With the stroke, I saw a lot of people up in the recovery and the rehab area that will never get out of bed, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've seen a lot of people and I've listened to a lot of people that have had far worse outcomes than my own. And um, there's a lot, there's a lot of people that health just cripples them mentally, Mm -hmm. physically. And I think that next time around, uh, a year from now, I'll be doing everything I can to be helping other people introduce other people to this experience. Are you working with your brother to bring about the clinics to well, different locations? I thought I heard him say that. I told I I told I told him that um as far as the two of us coming together that yeah, let's let's do this. But it, have, have we done anything formally at this point other than put some plans in place? Not yet. But yeah, we plan on having facilities, taking care of our families, and then take care of our communities. Are you up by him? No, I'm not. I live I live in another state. Uh, what state are you in? I'm in Colorado. Oh, okay. Not far from Utah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I live in California, just maybe two hours south of him. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, I grew up at at that area. So. Mm, Nice. Well, I just want to inspire you (laughs) that we're all here for a purpose. And I'm feeling that you survived the heart, the cancer, the kidney, the stroke, and you have a hedge of thrones or a hedge of thorns around you, protecting you because you came here for a purpose. Yeah. And I feel like that's what this is. That's ex- uh, yeah, this, that's exactly what this is. I, uh, yeah, there's a lot of lessons learned, both good and bad. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, <laughs> I, I, I can't wait to see what the, you know, what the next couple months bring. I mean, I'm a very, this is very calm right now, 
but I'm not a very calm person. I'm very uh, excitable, very go after it, do it kind of person. But, um, you know, so. so are you saying I brought out the best in you, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> well, that. I'll say this. This is the first time I've ever talked about this with anybody outside my family. Never have I talked about this before. And there's a lot more to say. And, you know, uh, but I don't think mentally I'm strong enough to go there yet. You know, it was hard for me to get to work this conversation out today. I would really didn't know this whole thing was going to go like this. But um, we'll get you back after the QR. Everybody gets a part two. Yeah. We wanted to get the no. whole team on video for part one and then part two will be after. Yeah. And, 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 you know, one more thing I should add, just uh, the device that I have right now, um, so right now I have to sleep probably four hours a day during the middle of the day. Because the kidneys, I'm just not strong enough, right? You, it, it wears you out quite a bit. But um, the levels were, my numbers where I'm at right now, I should be on dialysis and I should not be, you know, I shouldn't be feeling as well as I feel. Um, but when I keep looking for my device, I'm right next to me, but when I, since I've been, it's really helped with my fatigue, right? So if I need to go all day or 10 hours, um, I can do that. But if I don't have the device, there's no way I can do it. It just really, I, I get drained really, really fast. So it improves your energy is what it you're saying. It improves my stamina, yeah. Mm -hmm. I say, I don't, maybe energy is the wrong word because I don't really have a lot of it. But I know when, uh, so twice, um, my device wouldn't charge. I had and I had to let it go a couple of days to reset it. And in that time when it was resetting, and I wasn't, that was like, I think it was 28, 32 hours, something like that. I didn't have it. Man, I tell you, I could really tell the difference. It would be. I would probably sleep six hours during the day. Wow. We need to get hours. a backup to you. Well, <laughs> I have a backup. I, I take my wife's now. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Because uh, it's just, I can't be without it. Right. So. Well, hopefully the home health system ship in two weeks. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. I mean, I can't. that. that that's going to benefit everybody else in the house as well. Right. You know, yeah. so I'm looking forward to that. I have a dog yeah. who's not doing well. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I love dogs. Yeah. I have a uh, dog too. Yeah. When I charge my device, I always lay it next to him. Or if I'm, if I'm in that area, I lay it next to him because he needs it more than I do. Yeah. So, well, my dog comes and lays next next to the wherever the device is as well. So really? it's pretty smart. Yeah. yeah. That is cool. That's beautiful. I don't feel obligated. I feel it's a responsibility, right? To um, 
let people know. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, part two of this interview will be, you know, <laughs> it'll be pretty crazy if everything comes when? out. When? Not you know what? You're when? Right. I, <laughs> that's the uh, other side of me talking. Yeah, well, it's just about pivoting faster, right? Yeah. So I love to say that we want to choose our the thought that feels the best and focus on that. But when we get the thought that doesn't feel good, it's just about pivoting faster. You know, um, there's an analogy that says when we are living in our best light, we're floating down a river of ease. But when we're in, when we're focused on the things that we don't want, we're paddling upstream. So it's just catching ourselves fast or so we can float again. Yeah. Well, I never speak about my health. I always speak to it now. So I don't, I don't let the health control my issues, control my life by speaking about them. I always speak to them and I always speak to my kidneys. And I speak to my health. I speak always that way. I feel that I have the control over it instead of giving it the control over me by, by telling, you know, by letting it say it has me versus the other way around. Can I so teach I you a fun trick? It. Sure. I love tricks. Okay. So one thing I do is you can do it in your words, whatever you want, but you say this three times. I command my spirit to heal and balance my body right now. I command my spirit to heal and balance my body right now. I command my spirit to heal and balance my body right now. Five, four, three, two, one now. Yeah. And so it is. Because your spirit doesn't have unhealthy kidneys. Correct. So your spirit is in charge and we just need to tell it to do the job. You know, our bodies are, can heal themselves. When you break a bone, the bone heals. When you cut your finger, the finger heals. But we have this belief that other areas of our body can't heal themselves but they can, we just need to tell them to get, get it on, you know, get on with the show. Yeah. And so I do those types of commands very often and for all different things, whatever I want, you know, um, protection or removing anything mm -hmm. that's not good for me out of my body. And it really does help. So Maybe give it a go and see how it feels. I'll do that. All right, my darling, Tim. Thank All you right, so Tracy. much for spending All time right. with me today. It was okay, a you. pleasure. Have a beautiful right. day and I'll see you for part two. Okay, that's awesome. Thanks. Thank